Welcome back, Internet, to another Reddit story. We're doing another Tales from the Pharmacy. I just got my flu shot done and uh, got a story to tell. Anyway, let's get into them. Had a lady get mad at me for not having a prescription ready that she didn't give me yet. I'm a pharmacy tech. Was pretty new when this happened. And this lady comes up. Had the usual care to pick up? Yeah. Okay, what's your name? I look up the name and I don't see anything ready or in the process. If that ever happens, I go, oh, is it a refill? Was it sent to us by your doctor? She then gets very angry at me, pulls out a prescription from her purse and goes, no, obviously it's this one. I've been here for four months and I'm still so confused about her logic. And of course it was scheduled and she had to wait for it. So that was an added bonus. I had a guy call and tell me that he was going to read me his prescription so I could get it ready. C2, of course. I told him that that would not be legal. He insisted that he does it every month. Sure, buddy. As professionally as I could, I said no. Q, asshat. Storming in 20 minutes later, screaming about the obviously new jerk refusing his request. Granted, I was filling in that day, but still doesn't mean I was going to break the law. He threw his paper script at a tech and spent his wait time giving me the stink eye. Last I heard, he was demanding I be fired, but it was okay. Corporate and the store managers bestowed upon him a slew of gift cards and freebies. Oh, I hated retail. Well, I've got a couple of things to say about this one. The first one is going to be what happened to me recently when I got my flu shot. Um, I have two stories about my flu shot. The first one... Um, I was in the patient waiting area, you know, where you're not supposed to hear a conversation that the other patients have, but you're sitting like five feet away from them. Yeah, HIPAA laws are weird. Anyway, and so this lady comes up, older lady, had to be senior citizen, comes up and says, hey, I'm here to pick up a medication. Okay, what was your name? Um, I don't have anything ready for you. What medication was it? She says the name of the medication. I wasn't trying to listen in intently, but I mean, like I said, literally five feet away. Oh, um, it looks like that one's refill too soon until tomorrow. Well, I called them on Sunday and they said they would be ready on Tuesday. And the, the tech was like, no, sorry, looks like Wednesday. So I go up and finally I'm ready to go and ring up for my flu shot. And I just tell the tech, you know, like, hey, you know, I've been a tech for seven years myself. I know how it is, you know. Yeah, I'm sure you guys double check everything all day. Double check typing, double check counting and everything. But you're going to miss it, the date that you're going to tell a patient over the phone. That doesn't seem likely. As far as the guy having the C2 prescription that he wanted them to start getting ready before he got there. Um, if you're not familiar with pharmacy, you know, you actually have to have the physical prescription with you or a copy of it if it's not a schedule, like if a doctor calls it in or whatever. But in this case, the guy, it sounds like the guy had the paper copy and wanted him to, them to start working on it so that they could give him the prescription when, when he got there, which is, well, it's illegal because of a couple of reasons. One, because, you know, not having the actual prescription, but two, it's insurance fraud. You can't send a prescription or a copy of a prescription to a insurance company if you don't have the prescription. So, like, the guy saying, well, they did it for me before. I've worked where we've had some questionable pharmacies around, and you never know. Because you've, you've heard, like, these mom-and-pop places get away with a bunch of stuff. And I could see some mom-and-pop places doing something like that for someone, but... Like, oh, well, you broke the law for me before. I want you to break the law again. And then get showered with gift cards. Which was the normal for retail, you know. You don't want to educate customers and try not to encourage bad behavior. But instead, you just want to shower them with gift cards. You know, that doesn't teach the customer, like, you're not supposed to be doing this. We're not supposed to be doing anything like this, you know. All it does is just tell the patient, like, hey... Whatever bad behavior you think that we're doing, you know what, we're not going to question it, we're just going to give you free stuff, and then you know what's going to happen the next time? The same exact thing. Oh, retail is the worst. Can you count? Me. The script was picked up on 1020, so it looks like it'll be due in two days from now, on 1119. We can't fill until it's reached its 30-day mark. Her. Rolls eyes. 
Can you count? Today's the 29th day. Me. Now I'm doubting my ability to count, so I put it into Google. Uh, yes, ma'am, today is day 28. And she storms off. Sorry, not sorry, lady. Your husband's out of end. We'll have to wait. So there's a couple of things I read into that story that I don't know if most people are going to catch, but uh, Ativan is a Schedule 3, I believe. Schedule 3 is Schedule 4, I believe it's a Schedule 3. Anyway, and uh, so you can fill it after 80% of the previous prescriptions being used legally, which would put it at 26 days and not 30 days. Some pharmacies, like the pharmacies I usually worked at, would hold it for 90%, which would be 27 days but they wanted to hold this patient to 30 days, which tells me a couple of things. One, it tells me that that state just by chance has a has to last 100% law or on their prescription, doctor put must last 30 days, which the doctor's basically saying, this person has a potential of abusing this and uh, don't want them to really abuse it. So we're gonna make them wait until they're completely out before getting more. So, this lady, like, being cranky about not getting her, her husband's Ativan? Yeah. Mm, probably a good thing that the doctor put that on the prescription. I mean, you rarely see anyone get entirely, incredibly upset if they can't fill their thyroid medication early. It's always the benzos or the opioids. Huh. I wonder why they get upset that they can't get it early. Hmm. Weird. I am at my wit's end with some of these patients. We have a lady who manages her whole family's medications at our store. She's so intense anytime she comes to pick something up. Did her coordination of benefits insurance go through? Is the copay more than $4? You know the whole drill. Anyways, today she came in and was complaining about why we filled a medication that wasn't the correct strength. She admitted that she listened to the message that we left her and just filled it because she wasn't paying attention. She claimed that we misfilled medications because she received the wrong dose and prescription. I got very heated with her and said, You just said you weren't paying attention to the message and just agreed to have it filled. How is that our fault? And why did you have your doctor approve a prescription that wasn't correct for you anymore? She proceeded to tell me about how that doesn't matter and we shouldn't send her automated messages about things that aren't current anymore. I agreed with her on this and said I can't control the automated system but it's very important to listen and manage your medications. Let me just say this. She didn't like that at all. She goes, I guess I'm gonna have to start looking at every prescription and make sure it's correct before I leave here. I believe my pharmacy manager told her, yes, you should. That's an important thing if you have such high expectations. One day people will realize that we aren't their parents and I'll probably explode from happiness that day. There are a lot of things that I could probably just spout out that I got fed up with about having baby patients, about their medications, about the whole like um, bad or old medications. I know at least when I worked at Walmart or, and Walgreens, I believe, that you can actually disable or deactivate medications on the patient's profile. So, you know, like automatic messages will not go out or um, it won't prompt him for a refill or anything like that, but that's something that, <laughs> I mean, no one ever had any time for, you know? You, you just see a patient one month, and they get a 10 milligram of sertraline, and then next month they get a 20 milligram of sertraline, but all you see is a paper prescription for sertraline, you type it in for the patient. Very rarely do you, like, go into that patient's profile and say, oh, wow, they got a 10 milligram last month, it must be an increase in dose. The person that can do that, I believe, is the pharmacist. I know that it pro pops it up on their screen, you know, if it's a new medication and that kind of thing. But I, there's there should be an easier way of being able to disable medications, but there's not, and there's really no way of checking to see if they have a new strength in dose, unless that they're told by the patient, here we go, come full circle with patient responsibilities. The one thing that really bugged me, and I think at least the one that I can think of at the top of my head that, that bugged me about like patient being responsible for their own medications, is if they were out of refills or they're going to be out of refills, and they had a year supply of it, but all the refills are, are used up, and they're 
due for a doctor visit. And then they still ask me, hey, can you call and request a refill for my doctor? I'm like, yeah, I can, but it's been a year since they've seen you. They're probably going to want to see you first before authorizing refills. Well, can you send it anyway? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll send it. And then we send it and then we get a denied <laughs> response back from them saying patient needs to be seen. I don't know. It's just that I, the number one person in healthcare, it's often told, I, at least on the medical side, the number one and most important person in the patient's healthcare is the patient. Because, I mean, you can do whatever you can as far as a doctor or a pharmacy to try to help him or help him or her try to, you know, take care of themselves. But ultimately, it's up to the patient. But especially with retail, you know, the patient's always right. The customer's always right. Flood them with gift cards because, you know, rather than try to educate the patient and try to, like, tell the patient, hey, buddy, pay attention to your own medications instead you you try to baby people and i think that's why we get so many fresher frustrated people working in retail pharmacy nowadays anyway i'll i digress so i teased it earlier in the video about having a story about getting my flu shot so if you guys are here for the reddit stories and commentary like that you can stop here because <laughs> I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant about flu shots. So I worked Walgreens for three, three and a half years. CVS for like a month and a half. <laughs> if you don't know the story, don't worry about it. It's anyway. And then Walmart for about three, three and a half years. So about seven years total in pharmacy. And flu season was dreadful. Not because... Um, of all the sick people that come in, which is true. You get a lot of people coming in for like Cheritussin or whatever. Just a lot of cough syrup, antibiotics, Z-Packs, whatever. But you also have people coming in for flu shots, you know, because people wait until <laughs> until people are getting sick before they get their flu shot, because that's a thing. If, if you guys don't know, it takes two weeks for the flu shot to become fully effective in your body. And even after being fully effective you're protected about 60 percent of the time against the flu so even if you get a flu shot there's still a decent well a good chance that well I, there's still a chance that you'll still get sick from the flu shot but the longer you wait the worse off you are but anyway flu shots are bad uh in far in retail pharmacy at least when i worked at walgreens and walmart because it always seemed like that in, well, in pharmacy, if the pharmacist isn't there, things stop. Like, you can't fill medication. Well, you can fill medications. You can't sell medications. You can't get things ready. It Without the pharmacist there, you really halt. So, it was always dreadful when you have, like, a family of five come in on a Friday night. You're like, oh, well, we're doomed. <laughs> may, may as well... Loop us up. We're, we're ready to get pounded. Oh, anyway. But yeah, it's it's really like that because it's like, well, the pharmacist is going to be out there for 10, 15 minutes giving flu shots. And we're going to be sitting back here with our thumbs twiddling, people waiting in line for the pharmacist and stuff. And us basically saying, can't help you. Pharmacist is giving flu shots. And it was the worst. Like, it's also got worse working at wall walmart because of walmart if a new med if a medication's new for a patient even if they've had it for years like I've, I've taken this blood pressure medication for 20 years you know if it's a new prescription that was called in by the doctor the pharmacist has a check that needs to check it off with the patient so even if even if you have a patient that's been on a medication for, for 20 years you still have to have the pharmacist come over grab it out of the bag say you have any questions about this medication nope staple it and hand it to them which was ridiculous medication that a patient's been on for that long and they still had to wait for the pharmacist because now the pharmacist is given flu shots pulling patients in giving flu shots busy time slow time whenever and it takes forever like when i said family of five 15 minutes i mean probably yeah one patient, you know, the pharmacist gets out there and starts talking to a patient. 
and one patient the pharmacist could be out there for five minutes eight minutes or so meanwhile you have a whole bunch of angry people looking at you being like what's the hold up and you try to tell them can't really do anything without the pharmacist here sorry buddy it always got you super anxious and you wanted to hide you just wanted to hide from people but you couldn't it just was bad news all around anyway I tell you that so I can tell you this so I go and I call around for flu shot prices and Costco had a cheap price on flu shot because I don't have health insurance until the beginning of the year I'm paying out of pocket 20 bucks for flu shot super reasonable so I go to Costco um, give them my name I fill out the form you know for like have you been sick in the past 30 days have you ever been to Malaysia or, you know just weird questions like that I fill out the form hand it to them I go sitting down in the waiting room for 10 minutes or so they ring me up and they say okay if you want to go into the room there pharmacist will be with you in a minute I'm like okay let's let's get this done I go sit down and I decided you know, I'm gonna pull up my art my sleeve of my shirt so I start pulling up my sleeve and the pharmacist walks in and she says oh looks like you're ready for me I'm like oh yeah you know I've uh, just trying to make small small talk like yeah I've worked in pharmacy for a number of years blah 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 and as like I'm not even 10 seconds into my like spiel and I feel the needle go in me she pulls it out puts the little cotton swab on it and then puts a bandage on and just still kind of chit chatting a little bit and she's like all right well you're good to go have any questions no all right later like she was there in and out less than two minutes probably closer to a minute than two and that's what angered me <laughs> it's not because of the whole like speedy service that was fantastic what angered me is that how come Costco can do that but Walmart Walgreens and CVS can't it's all the same laws they're in the same state they should be able to do the same thing but they put all those bureaucracy BS into like hey the pharmacist needs to go over these things with the patient blah 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 that that lady was with me for two minutes at the most comes in shoots me up leaves why is this process not everywhere why did why did I have to suffer through seven cough and cold flu seasons with just like looking at angry people staring back at me just telling them hey sorry can't help you the pharmacist yeah I wish I could help you and that's what bugs me I don't know what the difference between retail retail stores why there's such a big difference I know it's probably legal teams whatever but I mean I'm sure Costco has the same kind of bureaucracy red tape that they have to go through too but they're able to streamline it streamline it and that's what bugged me I don't know why we have to go through all that just waiting around for the pharmacist to talk to the patients they even they even said at, at least at Walgreens or Walmart they even said yep yeah, just tell the patient to hang around for 15 minutes after their flu shot or after whatever shot that we give them just in case they come uh, come down with any sort of um, allergic reaction because we have the stuff we have the stuff to be able to give them there in the pharmacy so it's like yeah I know we we made you wait to get your flu shot it finally we're able to pull you over into the side you've already been waiting 20 minutes 30 minutes for your flu shot now after the flu shot can you hang out for another 15 minutes patient care and customer service has to be better than that we it, that's just ridiculous thank you again for joining me on this reddit story thing tales from the pharmacy yeah so definitely got long-winded there but I had to get it off my chest something I had to kind of bring to you guys to I don't know make me feel better at least anyway if you're still watching this thank you for watching the video until the end um, if you liked what you saw give me a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't share with a friend and I'm also now streaming at twitch.tv slash Kyoto Combat because why not? <laughs> uh, right now I'm streaming uh, Magic Arena and if you don't like 
uh, card games or anything like that, you're probably not going to like this because it's probably going to be boring. But I try to make the commentary, you know, pretty interesting. But anyway, it's already a 20 minute video. Holy cow. I think this is definitely the longest video I've ever had because I can't stop talking. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. So until then, later kids.